In today's video, we are going to be going over the best investments that you guys can make on FIFA 22. In our previous two videos, I've had a ton of questions in the comments, so I kind of want to go over um, just the player types that I think are going to be good, uh, the players that I think you guys should avoid, and we're going to talk about some market fluctuations as well. If you guys do enjoy today's video, make sure you guys drop a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. It would be much appreciated for the channel. And without further ado, let's get into it. So we're going to be spending the majority of the video today on Footbin, kind of taking a look at some prices, the popular players, and then going over some of your guys' questions on, you know, who to invest in, what to invest in. Now, for starters, this video is going to be more for people who don't want to actively trade or don't want to flip, don't want to snipe. You know, you don't have the time to do that. Um, there is obviously way more efficient ways to make coins than doing these investments. However, I know a lot of you guys like to play, enjoy the game. You're not trying hard and you're not, you know, sitting there sweating on the keyboard trying to snipe people and stuff like that. So as of right now, the market is in a very, very weird state. I'm sure you guys are all well aware of it. We have meta cards that are very low. We have low rated cards that are extremely high and we have fodder cards, very high rated fodder cards that are super low. Uh, so to start off, Romelu Lukaku, one player I thought was going to be very good in game. He's very fun to use. He's sitting at 57k on PlayStation, 70k on Xbox. Uh, and this will bring us into the first thing. I like some of these mid-tier meta cards. I think they're going to go up quite a bit once we get some more coins into the game. And in a second, we're going to kind of talk about the market conditions. But Lukaku, for example, he is one that is extremely low. I have no idea why. Uh, another one, Tony Cruz. Uh, this one just blows my mind, guys. I don't know why he is lower than the other 88s. But what is wrong with you guys? Well, seriously, what is wrong with you guys? An 88 Tony Cruz is 8.8k on PlayStation and 11k. He, he was sitting at 10k earlier. And then this guy is extinct at 30k. 30k for this guy. So why is the market like this? Why are we seeing so many of the meta cards so low? Why are some of these fodder cards so low and why are these low rated cards so high? Well, some of them anyways. Essentially, we didn't really get many market coins this year. Obviously, last year we had the division rival placement games. We didn't have it this year. This year, what we got instead was four new welcome backpacks, which we got 12 players in one rare in each one. You know, you're guaranteed 80 plus or whatever it's called. All we really got was supply and there's no coins coming into the market. There's nothing to counter that supply. Now today, uh, by the time you're watching this video, marquee matchups will probably already be out and the market may dip a little bit lower, which is why I'm waiting to kind of put this list out because you definitely want to get in before supply or after supply comes into the market because we will probably see us go down a little bit more this afternoon and into the evening. So what's going to happen obviously is today we're going to get that supply will go down a little bit more and I think Friday, Saturday, we're going to end up going up a decent amount as people just play the game. Uh, you know, it's going to be the weekend. People are going to be able to actually put time into the game and they'll build their coin totals up through gameplay, quick selling stuff, you know, whatever it may be, doing SBCs. And then in return, uh, we will end up getting Ultimate Edition this weekend, which everyone gets 4,600 FIFA points or Sunday into Monday, whatever day. Depends when, where you live and stuff and if there's a glitch out. But in return, what we're going to end up seeing is the market probably on when Ultimate Edition comes down, we're going to see a bit of a dip as we get a ton of supply. But then we're going to see a rip afterwards because we are going to see so many people finally have coins because of all the FIFA points and packs that will be open. We'll finally get some coins back into the game. Yes, some prices may drop temp temporarily, but in the long run, it'll end up being fine. So now this brings me on to my investment list, which I know a lot of you guys are more interested in anyways. Now, I get a lot of questions about who you guys should invest in. I've gotten a lot about Kamavinga, Emre Chan, all these other ones. Now, there are some cards that when this happens and Ultimate Edition's out, I think they're going to absolutely fly. But then there's some that I think are going to fall really hard. Now, you guys have to choose players that you're going to use in weekend league. So, for example, um, you know, this guy, he is most likely going to, I don't know, he's a, he's a weird one at 30k, but he's going to be one that gets into weekend league teams. Whereas someone like Emre Chan who is sitting very high right now, if we take a look at him, he's sitting, I, I want to say at like 25k right now, he's someone that's still not going to get in many people's weekend league teams, I feel like, last year he wasn't really usable in the game, and in return he ended up dropping, so I feel like cards like this that are going to get heavily supplied are going to end up actually dying in price, but I had a few about Jao Felix, now Jao Felix, this is a card I really do like as an investment, I think he is a little bit too cheap, 
4.4K on PlayStation and 5K on Xbox, that's a price I'd expect to see months down the line on a card like this, not so early on. So Jao Felix is a card I really like because he's a really balanced card. 86 dribbling, 82 pace, 5 star skills, 5K. Uh, Jao Felix is one I'm definitely keeping an eye on because I do think when people get coins, he is one that will end up flying and I wouldn't mind putting 100K into this card really. I think this is a great one right here. But my problem kind of lies into putting a lot of coins into cards like St. Maximin, for example. Jao Felix in-game feels just as good as St. Maximin does. And 91 pace, I feel like pace isn't super needed this year with the gameplay. So I feel like someone like St. Maximin, it's a very risky investment because let's be real, putting the pace aside from St. Maximin, he only has 69 shooting, uh, 70 passing, that's not great, and you kind of need a good balance of dribbling and passing in this game, especially just because it is it is harder to score goals this year. You're not going to be able to just, you know, run through defenses and skill spam and stuff and, and why, you know, why through ball it in. So when you look at a price like Jao Felix and you compare it to someone like St. Maximin, I just feel like there's more room for, you know, someone like Jao Felix to rise up a good amount. Uh, Upamakano, he's a decent one. I've heard he's a really, really good center back. I don't know what his price range is. Um, if you guys can get him extinct, I think this is a good one. He's French. He's from the Bundesliga. He's 15k. That's too cheap for Upamakano, especially when those other guys are going for 30k and are extinct. I don't know why the price range is so low on him, but someone like Upamakano, this is a card I would invest in. Now, obviously, you're going to have to try and snipe him to get him, but this is a card I'm going to say 100%. Go pick him up because he will go up in price. His price range will change and he'll definitely fly up. I also get a lot of questions about cards like Eder Militao. Now, Eder Militao, he's a tough one, and I had the same kind of thing with him last year, and we're going to take a look at Anaki after. But Eder Militao, he pushes around 50k at the start of every FIFA, and it's just a matter of once we do end up getting the supply uh, and, you know, people start evolving their teams, this is a card that just falls down so hard. And personally, as far as I go, I don't like to take the risk. I don't think the risk is worth the reward because at max, he goes to maybe 55, 60K. Is that worth the 10K per card? Not really. I think there's better options out there. So that's why, like, for a card like Eder Militao, I'm going to stay away from him. Now, another reason why the Jao Felix investment just looks even better is because of Anaki Williams. Two-star weak foot, four-star skills. He sits at 5K. 5K is expensive. He's got 94 pace, yes, but pace is not important this year, I feel like. It's not as important. And Jao Felix is five-star, four-star. And finally, one I've got a few questions about as well, Usman Dembele. Uh, again, it's an interesting one because with supply, he's just going to come down. Um, last year, it was kind of the same case. Again, it's really up to you. Five star, five star though. I just don't know if the risk is worth the reward. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not going to go to 100K. So it's not really worth it. And and I, I want to do one more actually before we finish off. Someone like Gabriel Jesus. Now Gabriel Jesus is an interesting one to me. And he's the reason why I really like Jao Felix too. Um, because last year he, he was a card that actually exploded into the weekend after EA play and, and stuff dropped uh, of last year's FIFA. He's 10k. He's got four star, three star. He's a really decent card. He's 10k. I think he can go like 20, 25k. A really nice investment too. I'm a big fan of that one because of just the other cards that we're seeing. Moving on, I want to talk a little bit about meta cards. Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, Ronaldo, and then we'll look at icons. They're all a little too cheap in my opinion. I think prices are going to rise on all of these cards. Uh, Messi looks a little cheap. 600k on Xbox. Not really worth. I, I think it it's a little too cheap. Uh, Ronaldo as well, uh, you know, he's come down, uh, I want to say a little bit on Xbox to 1.5. And then as well, Neymar's kind of set at 900k. I think as more and more people get coins uh, into the next week, I think these cards have a good chance of rising up. Same with the team of the weeks, we talked about it in yesterday's video. And same with the icons, I think the icons are all too low. I had a question about Balak in the last video, and I looked at Balak's price and I was like, this is very, this is too cheap for, you know, a base Balak at this stage of the game. 360k, it's just a little too cheap. He's a very good midfielder at the start of the game, and he is an icon. So again, I just feel like as, as more and more people get coins, these cards are going to end up going up. Uh, even the mid, I thought was a little cheap for PlayStation. Um, you know, last year we saw these prices um, just up a lot more on the icons, and I think we're going to end up seeing that. 
Um, again, as more and more people get coins into the game, I think the high tier meta cards are going to rise up. I think the low tiers you have to be careful for and be very, very picky. But yeah, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure you guys drop a thumbs up. Thank you for the support so far. It's been amazing. And until next time, peace.